If you're a teacher at all like me, when you're using your PC or your laptop, you're using the snipping tool probably on a daily basis. Well today, I went down to take a snip of this question and I'm gonna go ahead and take a snip by clicking new. Just like I've always done. Well, it kept refreshing itself and coming right back to here instead of graying or blacking out the screen and then allowing me to drag my cursor to take that snip. I kept clicking it for a little bit until it forced me to read what was going on and there's an update coming. So they're trying to improve the snipping tool. They're moving it to a place that's called Snip and Sketch. And you could also get to it by the shortcut of the Windows key, the Shift key, and the letter S all pressed at the same time. But you'll see that there's a blue button that says Try Snip and Sketch. And when I click this, what you're going to see is a window pop up and at the bottom tray here, you're going to see a new icon. And so what I always do when I want something that I use on a daily basis is I'm going to right click on that icon and I'm now going to pin this to the taskbar. So now that that is there, now I can try to play with this. So it's asking me to press the Windows Shift and the S key to start a snip. But it also has this blue button up here that says new and it has a drop down menu that says snip now, snip in three seconds or snip in 10 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and click new and here it is. I can draw my shapes. So I have a new toolbar up top and this one is rectangular. Free form is to the right of it. The window snip is still there as well. So we can take a screenshot of the entire window. And then this is a full screen snip. So I think the difference between the two, the window snip is going to be just the window that you're working with. And the full screen is going to get everything that is on your computer screen. And then of course we can X out of it right here. So I'm going to stay with the basic rectangular snip. Draw it like normal. And it puts it into this snip and sketch program. And what's really kind of cool is there are a lot of different tools now that you can go ahead and apply to this picture before you save it. So the first one right here says touch writing. So if I had a touch screen, I could go ahead and touch on my screen and write. This computer is not touch screen, so that's not going to be able to be done. I'm going to use my mouse. Next is what they call the ballpoint pen and if we click on it we have a lot of different colors and we can change the size of the line, the thickness of the line as well. And so if I change it over to a blue color I could go ahead and draw on this image or kind of highlight what I want my students to look at a little bit more by drawing an arrow. To the right of that is the pencil tool and again we have a a lot of different colors that go along with this and if we draw with it it does kind of look like a colored pencil if you will again we can change the size of it if we want and you can see that as I sketch I'm just moving my mouse back and forth but just like a pencil the more you color over the top of it the darker it's going to get so kind of a neat tool especially if you're planning on doing some sort of sketching or drawing with it to the right of that is the highlighter tool and we have six colors available for highlighting. We're also able to change the size of the highlight up to 64 thickness, which is excellent. It gives us a big broad spectrum in which to color. And if I wanted to make sure that my students saw the points and maybe the units or how much we're looking for, I could highlight those areas. If I don't like something that I did, I can use my eraser tool. And there is an option, there's only one option underneath it, and that's erase all ink. So if I click that, it would take care of everything. But if I click on the tool and then click an object, it, all I gotta do is touch it, and it will take care of everything that I did while I was sketching out that line or that highlight or that mark. So next we have a ruler tool. And under this tool, it has a ruler and a protractor. And what's really cool about the ruler tool is that it has a certain amount of degrees that you can move that tool in. And I have that little dial on top of my mouse. And if I scroll that dial forwards or backwards, that's gonna move the ruler tool for me. So if I wanted to draw a line going from one corner of the picture to the other, I could align my angle as best as I can try to get it to the corners and then what's really neat is if I pick a line tool 
or the pen tool and pick a color when I draw it's going to stay for the most part along that ruler unless I really get off and I can always erase it so you're able to draw now straight lines onto a picture no problem if I turn that ruler off there's that straight line so if you want a perfect straight line as you're annotating you now have it and you can move that ruler around same thing if you had a protractor let's switch it over and turn it into a protractor if I'm using the dial on my mouse I can make it larger or smaller scrolling the dial forward or backwards if you want to find out the angle that you have of a line or maybe something that is intersecting a line you're gonna put your protractor on that middle point wherever it is and then you can start drawing along the outside of this protractor and it will keep the curve perfectly smooth so if I start here on the right and I start drawing and just kinda of following the outside curve and I'm using my mouse and it's not easy to draw with a mouse but go all the way to the end so just about 180 degrees which is a straight line and then if I take my protractor off of it, you can see that curve that is there. I probably would want to start by putting some sort of middle point there, but you get the idea. So if students had a line or something that was there, they're going to be able to use a virtual protractor in order to find out the angle of two lines that possibly intersect each other or a ray that's intersecting a line. That's pretty neat. I like that a lot. And I like the fact that the ruler and the protractor keeps the line smooth against it like it would if you were using a real ruler or protractor. To click off of it, I just click on to where the ruler protractor is and then unhighlight it and it's now gone. So the last tool that they have is a crop image. After you've gone ahead and taken your snip, you are able to adjust this if you want to. And so when we click on it, we're able to go ahead and drag these four points however we want. If I want to drag the whole thing in, I'm able to do that, but we're able to kind of fine tune what our picture looks like. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click the check box that's up top that says apply enter. And now we have the picture that we want. Finally, all you have to do is click save. And now you're able to put this screenshot wherever you want on your computer. So hopefully you're not thrown off too much by the new snipping tool, which is called snip and sketch. And hopefully you're going to pin that to your taskbar down below. And you can now unpin the old snipping tool if that's one that you had. So out with the old, in with the new. Let me know in the comments if you like the new snip and sketch tool as opposed to the snipping tool. Try to say that five times fast. Thanks for watching as always and I'll see you in the next one. Tell me if you like the new skip and snip. Let me know in the comments if you like the new skip. I can't say it. <laughs>